There are endless opinions floating around out there about how you should invest your money and in what order. Should you contribute to your 401k first, pay off debt? Truly, the options seem limitless, as well as the confusion and the noise. Hi there and welcome to my channel. My name is McCall and on this channel we focus on how to make money online and also how to manage it wisely so that you can create the life you love. In this video I'm going to outline what I believe is the best order of operations to invest your money. Please understand that everyone's situation is different and I'm not a financial advisor, but hopefully this will give you a good basis to start with and apply to your specific situation to optimize your financial outcomes. The first place to put your money is an emergency fund. While it doesn't seem very glamorous or sexy, this is vitally important. Before you put your money anywhere else, you need to have an emergency saving account built up for rainy days. The exact amount is going to look different for everyone and will vary depending on many factors, such as the size of your family and your current living expenses. But the general rule of thumb is to have three to six months of living expenses saved up in your emergency fund. The lower your risk tolerance, the more you should have built up in your emergency fund. You can store this money in a simple savings or checking account so that it's easily accessible by you and you don't have to liquidate it from another investment or account. Life is unpredictable and sometimes as simple as spilling your coffee on your laptop all the way up to a major life event like losing a job or a major medical expense can really set you back. And this is why having an emergency fund is so vital. This past summer, we actually had the transmission go out on our car and luckily we had a warranty on our car. But if we didn't have a warranty on our car or we didn't have an emergency fund, this $6,000 fix could have really put us out. And for most families, that's very plausible because according to a bank rate survey, less than 39% of respondents could cover an unexpected $1,000 cost. This oftentimes leads people to look towards credit cards to cover unexpected costs, which come with high interest rates and can set you back significantly and send you down that slippery debt slope. Having a healthy buffer in the form of an emergency fund can help us face life's curved balls and it allows us to move forward in our ultimate goal of financial stability and independence. If you would like a simple printable version of the steps that we're outlining today, you can go ahead and click the link in the description below and that will be available to you there. Our second step where we're going to invest our money is into the 401k employer match. If you work for a company that offers an employee retirement account match, this should be your very next priority. For most people, this is going to look like a 401k, but if you work for the federal government, this may be called a TSP, and if you work for a state government, this may be called a 457b plan. Regardless of what it's called, if your employers offer a contribution match, typically as a percentage of your salary, you should be maximizing what you are contributing to take full advantage of this free money. I actually don't love the term free money because this really is just part of your employee's basic compensation and benefits package, but so many people end up leaving this money on the table simply because they don't understand how it works. For example, if your employer offers up to a 5% dollar to dollar match and you make $100,000 a year, if you contribute the maximum matchable amount of $5,000, your employer will match that contribution dollar for dollar and you will now have a $10,000 contribution to your retirement account for that year. That's a guaranteed 100% return on your money instantly, which is basically unheard of at any other investment. If you have questions, you should reach out to your company's HR or benefits representative so you can find out exactly what their matching policy is. Also, be sure to ask the company about their vesting schedule. The vesting schedule is how long an employee needs to stay with the company in order to keep the company match. Oftentimes, the vesting schedule is about three years, so it's something to consider when you're deciding when to switch jobs. The third place that we're gonna put our money is high interest debt. High interest debt is generally classified as any debt that has over a 5% interest rate. For most people, credit card debt is really gonna be the thing that you need to focus on attacking first. The average interest rate on a credit card is 16%, which is shockingly high. If you've followed me for any length of time, you know that I love the quote by Albert Einstein where he says, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. And that could not be more true than in modern society's use of credit cards. There's no magic trick or easy way to pay off credit card debt or any high interest debt really. You simply just have to get after it. The first step is going to be actually to compile 
a comprehensive list of any debt that you have. That will be step one, put high interest at the top, low interest at the bottom, which we're gonna talk about lower, later in this video, and we'll go from there. There's two main methods to paying off debt. One is called the snowball method and one is called the avalanche method. I would suggest that you research both of them and find what's going to motivate you personally to keep going and get it done fast. Once your high interest debt is all paid off, you're gonna be amazed at what sort of weight is lifted from your shoulders and how much more money you have to optimize the rest of your finances. The fourth place that we're going to invest our money is to maximize our Roth IRA contributions. If you were to ask the average person what's their largest expense in life, most would cite their mortgage or their health insurance or perhaps their vehicle expenses. But in reality, for most people over the course of their life, the largest expense that they're ever going to pay is taxes. That's where the power of the Roth IRA comes in. I'm all for legally minimizing the amount of taxes that you pay, and the Roth IRA is one of the most tax efficient accounts available today. A Roth IRA is a type of retirement account in which the contributions are made on income that has been already taxed, but in which the growth or the capital gains is not taxed at the time of withdrawal if certain retirement stipulations are met. For most people, this means that they cannot withdraw from the account until they are 59 and a half and that the money has been in the account for at least five years. A Roth IRA account is extremely powerful because it reduces the amount of unknown tax burden in the future. The tax landscape is constantly changing and it takes the power over our personal finances in retirement out of the hands of politicians and puts it back onto us as the owners of our finances. There are certain eligibility requirements when opening a Roth IRA. Either you or your spouse have to have earned income. That's right, if you have a stay-at-home parent or a stay-at-home spouse, they can still contribute to their own Roth IRA as long as the other spouse has earned income. Most people don't realize that and think that the stay-at-home spouse may not be able to contribute, but they can as long as one spouse has earned income and, this is key, you are filing your taxes jointly together every year. As of this recording in 2023, the maximum contribution annually is $6,500 if you are under the age of 50, and if you are 50 and older, the maximum contribution annually is $7,500. Also, fun side note, you can also open a Roth IRA account for your children, and I recently did a video on that, and you can check that video right here. Please note that a Roth IRA is an account and not an investment meaning that once the money is in the account, you need to actually invest and allocate that money appropriately so that it can grow and work for you. If you are learning something from today's video, I would like to take a minute to just ask you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It helps as many people see my content as possible. The fifth place that we're gonna put our money is into a health savings account or an HSA. This option may not apply to everyone as you have to be under a qualifying high deductible health plan before you contribute to an HSA account. If you do qualify, an HSA can be a very powerful tax advantage tool to save for any future health related expenses. HSAs are considered to have a triple tax advantage, meaning the contributions are tax deductible, the money grows tax deferred while in the HSA, and you can withdraw the money tax free as long as it's used to cover qualifying health expenses. For individuals, the current annual maximum contribution is $3,850 and for families, the current maximum annual contribution is $7,750. If you are age 55 and older, you can contribute an additional $1,000. The sixth place that we're going to invest our money is the 529 Education Savings Plan. We all want what's best for our children, and oftentimes for families, this means wanting to put money aside to help cover the cost of college tuition for their children. You can think of the 529 Education Savings Plan as a Roth IRA for education purposes. Contributions are made on an after-tax basis, but the capital gains and the growth once again are exempt from federal taxes and in most states, state taxes as well, although you need to check with your state's rules individually, if they are used for qualifying education expenses. There is currently no annual contribution limit to a 529 Education Saving Plan and contributions fall under the completed gifts for federal tax purposes. And as of this recording in 2023, up to $17,000 per donor per beneficiary qualify for the annual tax gift exclusion. 
I know that there are many thoughts on college and education and trade school right now and whether the cost versus the reward is worth it, but know that this is an option available to you to help set your children up for success in the college department. But if they choose not to use this money for education purposes, there are ways to roll it over into Roth IRA type accounts for them to use later in retirement. So the money will not go wasted. Step number seven is gonna bring us back to the 401k, but this time, instead of just trying to seek out that employer match, we are gonna go all the way up and contribute and max out our annual contribution to the greatest extent possible. Once again, this is going to significantly reduce our taxable income and potentially save us thousands on taxes. Under the age of 50, the current maximum contribution limit annually is $22,500, and for folks 50 and older, the limit is $30,000. Step number eight is the regular old taxable brokerage account. Once you've maxed out all of your tax advantage opportunities, it's now time to take a look into regular old investing. While it may surprise you that this falls so low on my list, the reality is you shouldn't be looking at regular old investing until you've maximized steps one through seven that we've already discussed. And that's because regular taxable brokerage accounts are not tax advantaged. Maximizing your tax advantage accounts first can save you literally thousands, tens of thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars in retirement if you maximize them first. After all, why pay more in taxes than you need to? It's important to note that even here in a regular taxable brokerage account, I highly recommend index fund investing and not trying to pick actual stocks. There's a many, many reasons for this. If you would like to read a very good book on this, J.L. Collins has a fantastic book called Simple Path to Wealth, which outlines total stock market index fund investing and why it is the most optimal for wealth building. I would highly, highly recommend you check his book out. The ninth place we're going to invest our money is lower interest debt. Lower interest debt for our purposes is going to be debt that has less than a 5% interest rate. For most people, this is going to be low interest student loans and low interest automobile loans. It is important to treat debt with the healthy respect that it deserves. I know that there's conversation out there between good debt versus bad debt versus if all debt is inherently bad. Just know that debt does require the appropriate and healthy respect that it deserves and precautions set in place so that it does not snowball out of control. Eliminating debt not only optimizes your financial health, but it also affects your mental and emotional well-being. Not to get too sad here, but as someone who lost a parent at a young age and in the prime of their life, outstanding debt at the time of your death, because after all, life is unpredictable, can leave your loved ones in an elevated state of distress on top of the grief they're already having to face. So taking care of your debt is really not only about you, it's about your loved ones. Number 10 and last on our list is paying off your mortgage. This conversation, again, can get kind of dicey and it's also drastically changed over the 12 months with the fluctuating interest rates. That being said, obviously the higher the interest rates on your mortgage are, the more enticing it is to pay off your mortgage early. Of course, each bank or loan provider is going to have different fine print here and you wanna be sure to check with them on what their stipulations are when paying off your mortgage early so you don't incur any penalties, but it's something to consider and after all, there's probably nothing more amazing than living in a home that is paid off. We're not there yet in our family, but I cannot wait for that day. If you would like a printed out version of everything we talked about today, the link is in the description below. And I wanna thank you for tuning in today and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video.